Hey guys, what's up? All right, in this video, I want to quickly discuss um, one of the reasons why I choose to actually host my own server when it comes to um, trying to figure out where to actually host your application once you're ready to produce it. Now, um, one of the things I'll mention is Microsoft Azure seems like a good product. It, it just recently dropped their prices and their entire scheme looks a little bit different, so it seems to be pretty cheap. Um, it's a lot cheaper than it was. Uh, however, one of the things that really pisses me off about any sort of cloud-based programming uh, or cloud-based setup is that you always have these like billable hours and you never know what the hell that you know actually means and if you do research on it you will most likely end up more confused uh, than when you started this whole cloud pricing thing it, it just seems like a racket to me and I've never I've never been a big fan of it especially as a small business uh, just trying to get things off the ground um, Azure, uh, Amazon's uh, EC2 or, or Google App Engine, I mean, they're probably great products for large companies that have entire IT staffs that they have to pay for. I'm sure at, at that point, uh, and this is just my opinion, then it would become an attractive option for me, like if I had to scale overnight or something like that. Um, but the bottom line is that most projects never get that big. And um, to be honest with you, if I ever do get that big, that'll be a problem that I, I would want to have. And um, I could probably transition my, my stuff over pretty quickly to um, some sort of cloud solution if I ever deemed it necessary. Or maybe I just run my own server farm like you know Facebook or Google or any other major company um, is currently doing. So, I mean, I'm not saying cloud is, is complete crap or anything, but um, when you compare it to something like Linode, which is my favorite hosting company, you pay 20 bucks a month you don't have any sort of confusing billing schedule or anything like that it is twenty dollars a month and you're guaranteed these resources which definitely blows away azure even with their newest um, reduced pricing this also gives you the flexibility of having um, c the actual root access to your server so literally you have to set up your own server um, which can be good and bad but once you learn how to do it um, i mean and there's step-by-step -step tutorials on all of it then I mean you're definitely you have much more flexibility going forward with um, different software and services that you may want to uh, run off of your server. If you look at the three terab terabytes of uh, transfer or the 48 gigabyte of SSD storage, your equivalent in Azure even but with the reduced prices, I mean it's going to be quite a bit more. Um, you know, we're talking hundreds of dollars more a month. And um, I gotta say, I, I've had a Linode twenty dollar account, and at one point uh, I had peak web tra website traffic of well over a hundred thousand visitors a month, and I think I came within like fifteen percent uh, of of my available resources or something like that. It was it was a very minor amount, like I wasn't anywhere close to actually exceeding that twenty dollars a month account. Um, and it was a blog based site, so there wasn't a whole lot of CPU. Um, you know, uh, being taken up or anything like that, but um, it was still quite a bit of users that were downloading the page and viewing it uh, simultaneously, and it held up just fine. Another alternative to uh, Linode is the newer kid on the block, which is DigitalOcean, and uh, this is another good company that I've heard a lot about, uh, but Linode actually goes back a little bit longer, and to be honest with you, Linode has always had stand-up service, and it seems like DigitalOcean is um, you know, somebody that has come along with a lot of venture capital money to grow and expand quickly. Uh, but Linode's been that guy that's been on the block for a long time and has been offering service that is um, next to none for a very long time. Uh, so I would definitely recommend Linode over DigitalOcean, but you can't you can't go wrong with DigitalOcean either. Both of them have a ten dollar a month account if that's better for you. Um, now, another thing. Um, about Linode and both DigitalOcean is that they do not support .NET. So if you're going to build an ASP.NET website, uh, unless you're using Mono, which is a whole other story, uh, then you're not going to be able to host any sort of .NET platform website on a, on a Linode account or a DigitalOcean account. So in that case, um, if you are building a .NET site, you're probably going to end up being forced to use Azure or um, the cheaper alternative which is uh, Rackspace. Um, however, they are expensive too. I've looked at them. I think the cheapest I could get them was like $75 a month, and it didn't even compare it to the $20 a month Linode resources. So, as much as I've um, you know wanted to do a .NET site, I just can't bite the bullet and pay all that cash to be able to host my site with Azure or Rackspace, at least for your typical blog site that's aimed at getting a lot of traffic. Um, I would go bankrupt by the time I started making any money. So. 
Uh, I, I don't have that kind of money to just spread around and make Microsoft richer. So for that reason, I choose to set up my own virtual private server, which is what Linode is here. And um, I couldn't recommend them more. And they're perfect for uh, Django or PHP or anything other than .NET. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, that's how I choose um, where I want to host my websites. Thank you. Bye.